Misfits. Hey everyone, welcome back to the 12 Days of Misfits. Yes. A little bit different style here, and hopefully you're watching at home because I think that's what makes it best in our ugly yes. Christmas sweaters. It's it's much more fun watching these than some of the, you know, most of the other ones you probably aren't going to have that much more of an experience watching compared to listening. But with these, it's much more fun to watch because between the craziness that we have in here, the craziness of our, our mugs and our sweaters, and just the craziness of watching Brandon, like, I know I've heard this before, but why? It's a lot more. It's it's Christmas fun. So we are on day four. No, we are on day. Yep. Yes, Matt. we are. We are on day four. <laughs> We are on day four, and Brandon has one whole point. We're on the board. We are on the board. One for two. One, one for three. One for three. Again, math, one, one, you know, yeah. we're, that's why we have the counter. We've got nine more to go, including today. So go ahead, and we'll get started on this. We'll see if we can get another point today, or at least a half a point. And, and today we are dealing with Micah chapter five. Micah chapter five. All right, by the title here, I'm feeling I'm feeling good about this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're in Micah in chapter five, and so this is what it says. Now, daughter who is under attack, you slash yourself in grief. A siege is set against us. They are striking the judge of Israel on the cheek with a rod. Bethlehem, Ephratath, you are small among the clans of Judah. One will come from you to be a ruler over Israel for me. His origin is from antiquity, from eternity. Therefore, he will abandon them until the time when... She who is in labor has given birth, and the rest of his brothers will return to the people of Israel. He will stand and shepherd them in the strength of Yahweh, in the majestic name of Yahweh his God. They will live securely, for then his greatness will extend to the ends of the earth. He will be their peace when Assyria invades our land, when it marches against our fortresses. We will rise against it, seven shepherds, even eight, even eight leaders of men. They will shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword, the land of Nimrod with a drawn blade. So he will rescue us from Assyria when it invades our land, when it marches against our territory. Then the remnant of Jacob will be among many people like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass, which do not wait for anyone or linger for mankind. Then the remnant of Jacob will be among the nations, among many peoples, like a lion among animals in the forest, like a long, young lion among flocks of sheep, which tramples and tears as it passes through, and there is no one to rescue them. Your hand will be lifted up against your adversaries, and your enemies will be destroyed. And that day, this is the Lord's declaration, I will remove your horses from you and wreck your chariots. I will remove the cities of your land and tear down all your fortresses. I will remove your sorceries from your hand, and you will not have any more fortune tellers. I will remove your carved images and sacred pillars from you, so that you will not bow down again to the work of your hands. I will pull up the Asherah poles from among you and demolish your cities. I will take vengeance and anger and wrath against the nations that have not obeyed me. Merry Christmas. Yeah. But this is actually a Christmas passage. And this is one actually that, again, you have heard regularly within the Advent season. But Brandon, there's a possibility here that we might be able to give you two points because there are two potential answers within this passage. So let's see what we can do. I had a feeling that this one might be split as I was reading. I was like, all right, I think I can get the one. I was like, I feel like there's another piece in here that is maybe a little more challenging to uncover. Let's go two and O today. We'll see. But there's a lot of prophesying throughout this whole Which is convenient chapter. because, you know, Mike is a prophet and all. Yes. Well, you know, you know how the Bible works. That's right. So, so what are we dealing with here? Uh, so the first part is basically chat or excuse me, verses one through six. We're looking at Jesus being born in Bethlehem. Um, specifically which verse? Let's see. Hmm. Oh, uh, basically verse two, part B, if you want to call it that from you shall come forth for me. One who is to be ruler in Israel, who's coming forth is from is from of old, from ancient days. Now, you've got ha- you've got one of the points with the second half there, but 
you're missing a couple of pieces to get both points. Why is verse two the main verse that we are working with within this passage? I didn't know if part of it was maybe how the world expected Christ to come to of being a king coming from a larger town or just how Christ would be presented or brought in more or less that it's not what was expected of, but you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah. So for Jesus to be born there is not how a story would have typically been written if you were thinking about all oh, this great mighty king would, was being born. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so you actually went even into more detail than you needed, but you're exactly right. The first half of this verse is what we normally associate with the Christmas story. You know, you Bethlehem who are small in the plains of Judah, out of you will come a ruler to rule Israel. And that's how we know, that's how the, that's, again, we're going back to the story in Matthew with the the Magi and the, the wise men, whichever name you want to give them. When they arrive at Herod's palace, Herod's scribes are the ones that look through and they see this passage in Micah that says, that the ruler is going to be born in Bethlehem. And so he sends them that direction. That's how we know. But like you said, it's also why the people did not recognize that Jesus would be the Messiah. Because one, they always associate him as the Nazarene, not as somebody that was born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, he did not fit the picture that the people were hoping for, for a Messiah, because he did not come as a king in power. He was born in a stable in this, one of the smallest, but yet one of the most important towns within the kingdom. Now, your second point is the second half of this verse that we don't normally hear. And it says, the one that will come from you to be ruler of Israel, his origin is from antiquity and from eternity. What does that little piece have to do with the story? Why does it matter? His origin is from antiquity, from eternity. And think back to yesterday as well, because that will help you. Yeah, because my mind is even different here in ESV. As from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. So I'm thinking if we're going back to um, coming forth is from of old. Why did this blank on his name? Jesus? No. <laughs> That's not who I was thinking of. Coming out of Egypt. Well, here, here's what we got. So his origin is from antiquity or of old. From eternity, we have both pieces, again, going back to what we talked about yesterday, as far as the importance of where Jesus has come from. Mm. He is both fully God and he is fully man. His origin was spoken about from a vault. He has the right to the throne of David. He's born in the city of David, and they're in that city because of the fact that both mom and and dad had to register in Bethlehem. He has that right. But his origin is also from eternity. Because his right does not just come from his birthright, but also from the fact that he himself is yeah. the eternal God. The authority from God. So the fun part of this, Brandon. Da David was the name I was thinking David of. is the name. That's, the name. that's the one I was missing. <laughs> you got both points. We're back up to three. <laughs> Now we're only down one. Yeah, it's time to make up some room. We, we can make up some more points here tomorrow. <laughs> this was day four. We're going into day five feeling good. We've got three points, and we're better. ready to go. So we will see you tomorrow for day five of the 12th days of Misfits. It's the Misfits.